Today we are starting recalls with little Rip. So it's really important to work your recalls when they're puppies because they want to come to you right now. He's all about Shannon. But as they get older, the world becomes a lot more exciting place and they lose interest in you. So we take this time right now when he's a puppy to use your recall word, which is here. He's like, yeah. To reinforce your dog anytime they come to you when you say that. So this is a fun game. We call it the recall game. You're going to grab eight to ten pieces of food, have some in each hand. You're going to say the word here. Throw the food behind you. As they're eating it, go to the next side. Say it. Good. Yeah, and look at Shannon's body language. She is giving him every reason to come to her. She's backing up. She's getting excited. Yeah, and she's reinforcing every time. So if you can grab eight to ten pieces of food, you can do this in your living room, your family room, your kitchen, doesn't matter, but we're doing it off leash to start. We're gonna do this a few more times and then we're gonna add a leash to it. So this is homework number one. Recall game off leash. You're just trying to get him to whip that head around when he hears here. So now we've added a leash to Rip. So Rip has gotten into the habit of kind of grabbing his leash with his mouth. And also he seems to, when you put a leash on, he wants to pull, right? And that happens when we're trying to walk our dogs and they don't know to walk properly on a leash yet. But this is also a way of practicing your recalls and giving him something else to do besides grabbing that leash with his mouth. It's the same game, except you're gonna try to get him to sit in front of you. So you're gonna let him go out in front of you. Here, run to Shannon if he can sit, because we know he knows how. Good, and we're gonna reinforce. Now, one thing Shannon's trying to add there that is might look a little strange. When we do our recalls here, we make sure that our dogs, let's say your dog knows the recalls, the entire behavior should look like this. I say here, the dog comes, sits in front of me, I touch their collar, and then we release them. Why do we do that? Because if your dog did get out in an emergency situation, that was a good one, most likely if they were off leash and you said here, they may come to you, but you reaching down to touch that collar is a whole nother ball game, right? They go, oh, she wanted me to come to her. We love the here game, that's fun. But when she touches my collar, then she takes me inside or I get, don't get to have any more fun. So we're gonna add it to the behavior now. So it's not different. So if you recall them outside when he's off leash and you touch his collar, he's like, cool, we've practiced that. Totally get it. So what Shannon's doing is releasing every time. He gets to wander. She says the word here. He sits. She touches the collar. And I'm touching and paying at the same time. Yeah, because he's a little already apprehensive about us touching the collar. So we're treating and touching his collar. It, we'll, we'll shape all that later to be pretty. Right now, we just want to pair touching the collar with something good. Now let's say Shannon said here and Rip did not come. This is probably what's gonna happen when we go outside here in the next session. That's when your leash comes into play. Just hold your leash. The pressure will be added by him for not coming to you. Good, all right, we're gonna end there. So we don't wanna do too many, but we'll wait until our next session. So we are out on our third and final session today. We're gonna go outside. So you saw the progression. The inside game was fun. Then I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. The inside game was fun. Then we added the leash inside. So now we're going to a little heavier distraction area. Everything stays the same. What do you want Rip to do? I want him to come to me when I say here. When he comes to me, I want him to sit and I want to touch that collar in order to reinforce him with the treat. And then you're gonna release him, say, okay. So he's like, should I chase it? This also works, like let's say he was running or walking the other way with Shannon and he picked up the leash in his mouth. Do a recall and then give him a treat. When he takes the treat, he's gonna drop the leash. He's like, I'm all, tell him. Same thing if he's walking and he grabs a stick or a leaf. Do a recall. He's gonna drop the leaf or the stick once he comes to you. And then he's gonna start realizing, oh, hey, it's really more fun to come to mom when she calls me rather than run around the neighborhood and chase squirrels and leaves and sticks and all that stuff. He's doing really good. I would not do more than maybe eight recalls at a time and really make sure to you, time, you give him time in between the recalls to sniff and do the dog stuff. Good, so we're gonna do a couple more. We're gonna really give him time to sniff. He's like, oh, I'm tired, it's hot out here. He's like, it was so nice this morning and breezy and now it's kind of gotten hot outside. So again, if you start to get to the point where he doesn't wanna leave you, just go ahead and end your session. 
So he's chewing on the, oh, no, he's not. I thought he was going to chew on that leash. Good. See how Shannon decided to just drop that leash? Because pulling on the leash when it's in his mouth almost creates a tug-of-war game, and you don't want to do that. Dogs love that stuff. Let's see if we can get one more in. One more. Good, but that was a good one to end on because I wanted you to see, see that little bit of pressure? You know, rewatch this video and watch on that one. He didn't really want to come, so Shannon just added a little bit of pressure on the leash. As soon as he felt that, he came to her and then she reinforced. All right, so practice those recalls, recalls, recalls.